So hey guys, how are you all doing? Welcome to Expert Link and me, David Ford, and another word from the street. We might cup of tea, by the way, in the back of the van. So the word from the street this week, it's all people, people, people. And more people. Absolutely. So um, just so as to be clear, though, we don't uh, I don't sit and make this stuff up. We've got a network of people around the country that we get together on a weekly basis and have a chat about the things that are happening out in the areas, particularly around the COVID-19 uh, stuff at the moment. Um, uh, and so if you want to uh, keep updated by what's happening by this group, hit the like button now, hit the subscribe, subscribe button and ring the bell so you get the notifications. Yeah, go on subscribe notifications what we're hearing at the moment how amazingly out there that things are starting to settle down and how wonderfully people have adapted and, I, and I, I, when i say wonderfully people have adapted i'm talking about local authorities services you know the frontline workers volunteers um even down to those with lived experience who were there to support people are adapting and you know um you have to think about those with lived experience how this has been uh, quite a challenge for us because the uh, out of the five and a half thousand probably people who were sleeping, um, we've got uh, just shy of um, uh, four, over 4,000 off the streets and into accommodation. But remembering these guys come from a place of uh, more, it isn't just about the bricks and mortar, there's some myriad of other things behind it and often it stems from a place of childhood trauma. These guys have uh, been put into accommodation and they've had to adapt to complete change of way of life for a lot of these guys uh, and they've adapted and they've adapted so well on the whole and I think that's absolutely fantastic I think it absolutely shows how amazing they are and also highlights how amazing the services are to help them to do that um, but what was key in part of this is about the relationship building to support people in there so um the, the relationship building but also what's going on is support around uh, um, drug and alcohol services um, there's lots of food being put in volunteers doing amazing things people being given food now regularly so they don't you know need to go out they can do that uh, social distancing thing absolutely fantastic uh, and i'm really proud of our sector and the community that we uh, at expert link um, uh, support and represent i guess um but that let's go back to that thing about relationships because this is this is the key thing the relationship thing and and here's a wonderful story about somebody uh who was um having to use methadone she's on a script so for those of you who don't know um if you're a heroin user and you want to go into recovery one of the ways that can support you is through uh methadone and it's a script so what it does um, it replaces the heroin and you go down on a daily basis go to, to your chemist once you've got your script it's a long process for that by the way you get your script uh, and then you start taking your daily dose that means that you don't have to do your heroin and you can start to build a, a life for yourself in the future um, which is great so a story is the story is this um, somebody who's a, a, a methadone uh, on a methadone script uh, was given a seven days prescription and the norm is that one day. And the comment was that um, I've never been trusted um, like this before. Um, I feel so empowered. And this is absolutely you know, fantastic that they've entrusted me with my methadone script uh, for seven days at a time. Guys, that is amazing. You know, that little bit of trust in someone, I could go and trust about all day actually, or that bit of trust though in someone, uh, where they are in, in their place and you know, on the, the part of, of recovery that little bit of trust building that person up it could be a springboard to some great and amazing things it's absolutely fantastic and and actually it's something that a lot of us a lot of services out there should take on board trust um have trust and faith in the community because we're a, a, pff, stuck for words look they're amazing absolutely incredible so um although there was lots of good things coming out this week there were a few through a few challenges uh, and, and, and a lot of that is around the, the lack of co-production and a lack of engagement. So what's happened is at a, a vast rate of knots, you know, in a month, it's something that we were, so that um, the Rough Sleepers Advisory Panel and the government were planning to end rough sleeping in uh, the term of this government, which is another four or five years ago. They've done it in a month, effectively. There are still people out there, yes, that will need to be um, uh, their situation addressed and, and look at ways of how we can get those off but essentially with 80 percent of people who are rough sleeping we've managed to get off the streets which is absolutely fantastic we've done it in a month but in that in that haste and that speed to do it what's happened 
often, um, uh, or from what I'm hearing, is that voice of lived experience is being lost. It's not being heard. And here's, there's so many examples of it, but here's one that's actually quite frightening. So one local authority putting people into hotel and bed breakfasts, they put three three of the same drug dealer, uh, three drug dealers from um, in the same uh, B and B. Well, I knew what was going to happen as soon as I heard that. Before the sentence got finished and, uh, and the story got finished, I knew what was going to happen because it doesn't work that way, does it? I mean, we're not talking Al, Al Pacino's here or anything else like that. We're talking about guys who are doing a bit of dealing um, uh, to probably to stay in their habit, but I could be wrong, but uh, doing a bit of dealing to sustain their habits uh, and uh, and the like. They stuck them in, in the same uh, accommodation. What happens? Violence. The upshot of it is that local authority has now gone to the local lived experience to say, hang on a second, we've got this wrong, um, can you help us? Because straight away they'd have gone, don't do it! Um, but they've called in the local lived experience team who are now starting to work better with the local authority and the guys. That should have been happening from the start. There were no ifs and buts in that. And if you're a local authority watching this, start listening and looking and speaking to um, uh, the guys out there in your community with lived experience who are connected with the, uh, uh, these guys. Your lived experience teams, and if you haven't got one, get one. Because these are the guys who are really crucial at the moment. Long term, if we want to keep one of the challenges, what's going to happen long term? And, and can we sustain, is this sustainable what we're doing at the moment? Uh, that's a big question, big, big question. People going stir crazy. One of the ways to manage this is through relationships. The lived experience can be that conduit, that bit in the middle that helps build the relationships to hold people in place, to keep people on track, um, to keep people engaged, to, um, to, to support people on new roads of recovery and stuff like that. The lived experience team should absolutely um, be speaking to the, these guys and engaging them with your services and with your local authorities. Um, was that a bit of a rant? Didn't mean to be a bit of a rant. Guys, um, uh, we'll have some more words from the street from you next week. Uh, I'd love to hear what your comments are. I'd love to hear what's going on in the, uh, around in your area. Please hit the like button. Subscribe, subscribe, sub subscribe. And subscribe a bit more. Hit the, no, it's the bell, isn't it? Get the notifications so you get the, the next ones. Um, that's enough for me for this week, guys. Uh, love you all. But until next time, stay safe. Don't give up.